Juliette from Juliette de Chocolat, and I'm going to teach you how to make marshmallows. But I'm, I'm going to do much more than that. I'm going to teach you how to make these cute little mice on the cheese, and the cheese is actually the marshmallows, which is covered with chocolate, and then you have the cute little chocolate mice. So this is going to be really fun. So we're going to start with the 600 grams of glucose. I put Pam in there so it's easier to like slide it in because otherwise it's really sticky as you can see. So sugar, I have 800 grams of sugar that I'm going to just add on top. We have 200 grams of water. We're just going to add on top here. So the next thing that you're going to need is a thermometer. This is really important. You need it to be at the right temperature, otherwise it won't work. So we'll turn it on. We'll put it at high. You can put it at high. Make sure everything in there is wet. We'll just let it rise to the right temperature. So while this is happening, we're gonna use gelatin. So you have 65 grams of gelatin. This is sheet gelatin you can probably find at the supermarket. Otherwise, you can also use powdered gelatin. You need to soak it in water. So if you're gonna be doing it with powdered gelatin, don't put so much water, because you don't want too much water. You just want it to be melted. But for the sheet gelatin, you can just put it in there and it's gonna hold its shape anyways. So we're just gonna let that sit. And then we have seven grams of natural vanilla extract. You're gonna use a pan, parchment paper on top. I put Pam underneath so it doesn't stick because you're gonna see that marshmallow sticks quite a bit. And then you're gonna put cornstarch on top. So now we're just gonna wait for this to go up to 116 degrees. And it's only at 27 right now, so we have quite a bit of time. You can go have coffee, relax. <laughs> so once it's around 100, it's gonna go pretty fast. It's the beginning, it takes a bit of time. Okay, so the gelatin soaked, so it's nice and soft. It should feel like jello in your hands, which is really nice. I love the feeling. We're just going to get all the water out as much as possible. We don't want too much of it. There we go. We'll put it in there. This is starting to boil. So you want your uh, tip to not be touching the bottom of the pan because it'll kind of give you a wrong reading. So you want to make sure it's in the middle of the syrup. This part you don't want to do with the kids. You kind of want to get them away from the hot syrup so you don't have any accidents. We're just going to make sure. It's 116 everywhere. Okay, we're good. We'll turn it off. And so the syrup is gonna keep on melting the gelatin. So we're gonna pour it slowly. And it's gonna seem very liquid, and that's normal. We just let the mixer do the work. And as it starts fluffing up, we're gonna higher the speed of the mixer. But don't do it right away because it's extremely hot and you don't wanna burn yourself. And you wanna make sure that your mixer can stand the capacity as well because it's gonna double in size. It's gonna be about to the top of the mixer. This is a pretty high capacity, so if it's too much for you, you, don't, you can do it in a smaller pan, you can half the recipe. And while this is spinning, we can go do the chocolate mice. So the marshmallow is done, it looks beautiful. 
And you can tell that the marshmallow is done when it's, it's stiff peak. So this is, it's not too stiff, but it's just the right consistency. You, you want to be able to spread it. And you have to go pretty fast because once you pour it, it's going to become solid pretty fast. So there you go. We're just going to pour it in there. If you want it to be thicker, you could also use a smaller pan, a higher pan, so you could have thicker cheese. Really depends on the size you want of the finished product. So you can see it's really, really sticky. It's so nice and shiny. You don't even want to finish the recipe. You just want to eat it like that. So that's when you work with the kids, because they'll be happy to finish the bowl for you, whatever's left in the bowl. There. It's like real cheese, real melted cheese. <laughs> you want all the bubbles out? So then we're going to use the cornstarch. Go generously with the cornstarch. You want some all over? And then this is the most fun part of the recipe. So if you like the jello effect with the gelatin, you're gonna love this. Just put some all over. The excess will fall out anyways once we cut it, so it won't be a problem. You just pat it and it feels like a warm pillow. You wanna sleep on it. Really nice. There, so I'll just shake that. Get the excess out. So we're gonna let that rest. Ideally, you leave, leave it overnight, but usually people don't wait that long, maybe three, four hours, or in the fridge. You need to let it dry. The drier it is, the easier it'll be to cut. So I'm gonna go get another pan that's already ready. There we go. So we'll take down the paper. And then we're gonna cut our little rectangles and I'll show you how to make the rest of the cheese. So everywhere, where it's still sticky, you can put cornstarch. That beautiful white fluffiness. Okay, so we'll just put it everywhere. Be generous with the cornstarch. We're gonna cut it in half. Cuts really nicely. Oh, it's really sticky. Okay, so we'll put cornstarch here. You see, this one didn't set quite enough, but it's okay. It can still dry. There you go. So now I have to do my marks again. <laughs> so the way we do it is you wanna go from one from here to the side and that'll make, there you go. And then you want to do this here. There you go. So here, you get a cheese, and then you would keep on going, going from one mark to the other. You might want to cut it as well so it looks more like a cheese and not like a marshmallow. <laughs> there you go. So we got one here. We'll take the excess out. Got another one here. Cornstarch on both sides. Make sure there's some everywhere. This one looks better than the first one. Needs to look homemade too. That's the, they're all, all different. There you go. So both sides and then shake the excess off. So now we're gonna do the cheese effect. So you take one and with a something round, I'm using this, but you can use whatever's round, a round spoon, a melon ball could work as well. You can do as many as you like actually. It really doesn't matter. We'll do one in the front, and then we'll turn it around. It's really sticky. Easier when it's dried a little more. So try to be patient, not like me. So here we have one here, so I'll do one at the opposite. There you go. And here I have one on top, so I'll do two at the bottom. There you have it. We got a little piece of cheese. This is chocolate that's colored to look a little bit yellow. You can just use white chocolate that's colored. So you're gonna dip it as much as possible so you don't get your fingers dirty. Oof. <laughs> it's a little too uh, not dried enough. <laughs> but it's fine. 
It'll look kind of wonky, but the one that I did before was dried enough. So you should wait, learn from my mistake. So we'll put that in, we'll do it half. Cover, make sure you cover everywhere. Cover it here, there you go. And then shake the excess off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna shake it to hide the first mark that we had at the beginning. So we're gonna put it there. You wanna shake it like this. And make sure that the chocolate is running down on the sides so it looks, ah, there you go. The bubble pops, if, there's, if this happens, it's fine. Just a little bit on top. This one is gonna dry, but I have one that's already made. So there you go, this is what it looks like once you've done it all. We can start working on our little mice. Our chocolate eggs are done. You need two hollow eggs. So what you wanna do is stick them together. So to do that, you need a hot surface. I'm not gonna do it right now. You would heat it on the surface and then stick them together. You want it to be flat at the bottom. So you just heat the bottom until it's flat enough that it'll just stay. Okay, so I made some in advance. We need three for a cheese. You can do more if you'd like. So you need to make a little paper cone like this. It's white chocolate with strawberry in there. Uh, you could also just buy chocolate that, that's pink. You can find that easily. Okay, so now we're gonna be doing the little ears. So you need little crisp pearls. Those are strawberry crisp pearls. Right there, right there. So you don't need too much, and then just stick them on. The trick with those little cones is you just want to press at the back, and this finger is just going to help you guide. And do the little nose. And do the little nose. And the last one here. There you go. So you have your three little nose, and then we're gonna do the little tail. So you can do like a reverse S or a squiggle. Let's go crazy. There you go. That's a male. <laughs> okay, so we're done with that. Then we need chocolate for the eyes. Okay, it has spiky eyes. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know why it wants to have spiky eyes. There you go. Well, I don't know why it does that, but it's fine. And then we're gonna stick them on the cheese. So we'll put a bit there just to stick it. The idea is that your cheese shouldn't move once it's done. We're gonna put a little bit at the bottom of each of my mice. And you wait, you press on it, and make sure that it sticks perfect. And there you have it. Spiky-eyed mice. So this is how you do your marshmallow cheese with the little mice. So I highly recommend doing them at home, but if you don't want to have all this mess in your kitchen, you can also get them at Juliette de Chocolat, which is my uh, chocolate stores. I have a couple in Montreal. You can't buy them online, unfortunately, but we do have an online boutique at JulietteEchocolat.com. And if you do make them, I recommend packaging them nicely because it makes it all the more sweet to give to your friends and family. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope I can see you in one of my stories.